Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nirish Kumar Singh and we are getting started with a fresh new series of ISTQB certification and this examination is about Agile Tester Extension which is done after the foundation level. So if you're ready with that, we can just quickly get started. So we'll be breaking up the content into three chapters here as per the syllabus and we'll be looking into the details of each of the topics under that. So we are in chapter one today. That is, uh, we have two subtopics as part of chapter one. That is fundamentals of software, the agile software development. And second topic is aspects of agile approaches as a part of chapter one. Now we will be breaking each topic as well into subtopics, which is to make your learning experience a much more detailed and understandable. So in this tutorial, we'll be working on the first subtopic of the topic 1.1. That is 1.1.1 Agile Software Development and the Agile Manifesto. Let's understand more about it and then we'll look into the next tutorials. The Agile Manifesto is all about like what are the Agile values, how Agile generally works within the organization and what makes it unique and different from the traditional approaches. Now traditional had a lot of drawbacks which is overcome by Agile Software Development model. Now, of course, what is that makes it different from the traditional and how it has overcome the barriers of the traditional models is what we are going to talk about in this particular segment. So we have four major business values or we generally know it as Agile Manifesto, where they say that here we give priority to individuals and interactions over the process and tools or giving priority to working software over comprehensive documentations, priority to customer collaborations over contract negotiation and responding to change over following a plan. Now here, let's understand each one of them in more detail that what exactly they mean. Now generally in agile development process, we talk about having individuals who have the required skill set who can generally do this one uh, implementation at the best way. Generally here, the team comprises of people who are self-motivated, self-oriented, because an agile team is not said to be having a boss. Like there's no one to direct them, no one to control them, no one to consistently keep monitoring them. So we need people who are self-motivated. You know, uh, they are oriented themselves to look forward what is supposed to be done next. And they don't wait for anybody's directions or orders that what should be done next. So we are having people who really have their known responsibilities and they know that what to do next. Also, when you talk about the interaction, which was a barrier in traditional approaches, we heard about psychology of testing and foundation certification, that yes, we had a challenge between the development and the testing team when experiencing a mixed uh, team of organization. Of course, we have overcome that as well, where we do not have anything called as development or testing team here. We just have one team called as entire software development team. So we have built a lot of good interaction because we put them together as one team at one place, which makes a more interactive uh, you know, process to deal with any kind of concepts within the entire project. The second thing is about working softwares over comprehensive documentation. So here we do not give priority to writing heavy and uh, detailed documentation, which could take a lot of time for you to prepare them. And then at the end, you do not deliver anything at the right time. So generally in traditional approaches, we were busy creating a lot of documentation. And by the time we come back with the right thing, it was already late for the customer to know that what you have been doing so far. But here we talk about delivering something quickly to them from time to time, right from the very first fortnight or maybe just 15 days of the initial project, you can deliver something to the client where client can give you some inputs to make sure that what is not correct or maybe it can also help you to get any kind of inputs from the client and client can also be aware that what's the progress on my project. So that could be another way where we say that by giving working softwares, we satisfy the client's requirements and also come to know certain early feedbacks and at the same time, we do not give values to creating heavy documentation, which could be consuming a lot of time in your entire process. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation, which generally means that here we try to involve the customers with us. We say that why don't we come and join hands with us to help us minimize the defects at an early stage or help us with those things which require certain assumptions, where it's not mandatory that the client will be knowing all the entire details of the requirement, what they want to make. So sometime I would like to ask you and get clarified with those queries which I generally have. So we will be having a quick and call uh, customer 
a collaboration with the development team, which will be always in consistent touch with the team to help them assist them make the product better and faster. And we generally do not give priority to this uh, contract negotiation in terms of traditional approaches, because generally in traditional approach, we had a lot of discussion on contract negotiation rather than collaborating with them. Responding to change over following a plan. So here we talk about uh, creating something, giving them uh, you know responses quickly and asking them what is that you are having an input. And when the client comes back and says that, hey, no, I'm looking for something different. Maybe you can quickly respond to that. That would be more important than following a plan. Because we also experienced that plan is something which is really important to be created, but not so strict that because of your plan, you do not result in a good output. So we do not give priority to the plan compared to responding to the changes which a client wants at any point of time. So as we deal with different iterations here, we will be considering the requests as early as possible instead of waiting for the entire software to get complete and then look for something which is surprising. So here we give priority to responding to the changes by the client rather than sticking or strictly following a plan. The next thing is about we have got around 12 uh, principles of Agile Manifesto. We have certain standard principles to be followed throughout the Agile methodology and should be followed by each member of Agile team. So let's quickly look into the principles of Agile Manifesto here. Our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. Of course, at this point of time, we say that the highest priority is given to satisfying the customer rather than doing anything internally which is not required by the client. Welcome changing requirements even late in the development. So we allow the changes to be entertained even late in the development cycle. We'll be understanding more about this because what is the cycle of uh, Agile development process, what is an iteration and also till then just keep it limited to that, that we just welcome the changes from the client. That means it can allow the changes for the requirement. Deliver working software frequently at intervals of between a few weeks to a few months. So generally we have a short term duration to deliver something and frequently. That means unlike traditional approaches, you do not wait for six months or seven months to deliver the first piece of code or first look of the product what you're making. Rather, you do it within five few weeks of time or maybe a few months, like with just one or two. But generally, we have a cycle period of around two weeks of time. Business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. So we have a better interaction, which is understood from the Agile Manifesto. Build project around motivated individuals where we have people who already know that what they're supposed to do and people are not instructed here. People, the team members of the development uh, team knows that what they're supposed to do the next to deliver with the commitment. The most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face-to-face -face conversation. And that's the reason we here recommend that the development team should be placed at one location under one roof. So generally your agile development team will not be distributed geographically. Working software is the primary measure of progress where we say that what you have delivered to the client is the best way to measure that how much you have covered. So generally we don't do that like internally how many testing, how much testing has been done, how many defects you have found is not a primary measure in agile development model. Generally, what you have delivered to the client and how much acceptance criteria you have met from the client side is more important as a measure for us. Agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsor, developers, and users should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. Where we're talking about a sustainable development process generally means that it's just not that initially you deliver something and then you take a long time to deliver something again. Rather, you keep a constant pace throughout the process to deliver consistently to the client. Continuous attention to technical excellence, good design enhances agility. So generally we say that continuous attention to the technical excellence means we keep on upgrading and ramping up ourselves from time to time by understanding what could be the best thing which we can do for making the product more better. Simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential where we say that keeping it as simple as possible, like breaking the requirements into simpler forms, which will be easy to handle at any point of time, so that we have less queries or less hectic jobs to be done within this small period of sprints. 
The best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self-organizing teams, where we just recommend that having a very good uh, communication between the team members could really help you to have a great uh, design, great work effort, and great coordination between the team member, and finally, a right product to be delivered to the client. So generally, the communication makes it more uh, worthy and wealthy. At regular intervals, the time reflects on how to become more effective, then tunes and adjusts behavior accordingly. As we talk about agile development model, of course, it is an iterative incremental model. So every single iterations, we are trying to uh, have an increment as well. And every single iterations, we try to understand that what is that we have done wrong so far and fine tune the very next iteration so that we can avoid such things happening right within the project unlike the traditional approaches where it generally happens once the project completes so we call it as retrospectives and here the retrospectives takes place after every single iteration or sprint so we'll be talking about these terms in more detail in upcoming chapters this is the very first tutorial of this series and that's all from here team i'll be coming back with the next topic of this chapter so to stay tuned for that till then keep exploring keep understanding keep learning about the context in case you have any query any doubts please feel free to comment below i'll be there to assist you at any point of time if you're not subscribed to the channel please do subscribe which will help you to get notified with the latest tutorials on the series and many other to come so thanks for watching the video team take care happy learning